Thank you, Dr. Melders. Welcome, everybody. Um, as Dr. Javier Phil said, I'm Dr. Jenny Manders. I'm chair of the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies. And I'm so pleased to see everybody tonight. And I think maybe I've run into a few of y'all in the office, but I want to ask, um, for how many folks is this your first or second semester in the program? Okay, so almost everybody. Did anybody come into the program before this past fall? Okay, all right. Um, you'll understand why I'm asking in a, a little bit later. What I want to do today is talk a little bit about the field of interdisciplinary studies. I know you're getting your degree in interdisciplinary studies, but I want to talk a little bit about what it is beyond just the program where you choose three disciplines. And then um, talk a little bit about the structure of the degree and what you'll be asked to do throughout um, the next couple of years as you complete your degree. And most of y'all have <coughs> a choice to make um, in terms of doing a senior research thesis or an internship. And so I'll be talking to you a little bit about that as well. First of all, you may not know that the field of interdisciplinary studies is actually the oldest in the world. Aristotle was considered the father of interdisciplinary studies. So you're getting a very old degree. And we'll talk later. It's an also a very marketable degree and popular degree. Aristotle believed that anything worth studying needed to be looked at from multiple perspectives, that there was no one way to look at anything important and fully understand it. Now, in Aristotle's time, we didn't have as much knowledge as, as we did now, and he believed that the three disciplines that you needed to understand the world were poetry, biology, and, and politics, that if you understood those three, you can understand the world. Well, you know now, when we talk about disciplines, really, it's, it's um, fields or, or majors. And you know how many majors we offer here at South? There, there are hundreds, if not thousands, in the country and throughout the world. So our, our body of knowledge has grown tremendously. But the field of interdisciplinary studies um, has also grown to be one of the most popular degrees in the nation, the Chronicle of Higher Education. Um, which is the, the journal that, uh, the premier journal that deals with issues related to higher education, listed interdisciplinary studies as in one of the top 20 degrees in the nation in 2010. And when you think, again, there are hundreds of degrees available in the country, and this is one of the top 20. The Educational Occupational Outlook Handbook listed interdisciplinary studies as um, stating that degrees and jobs available to interdisciplinary studies majors were as competitive and salaries were as competitive as those in most traditional majors. So the good news is you're getting um, a very strong degree that has a good deal of marketability and you'll be coming to think a lot more about that in a couple of years when you get ready to graduate and think, well now what am I going to do with this degree? But the um, statistics on interdisciplinary studies look good. It's, it's the oldest degree in the world. It, um, it's growing both on campus and across the country, and the job and the salary um, opportunities look pretty good right now. And so you can be really pleased with your choice of, of degrees. But it's more than just a degree, as I talked about earlier. It's, it's a field, just like the field of psychology or the field of business or engineering. It, interdisciplinary studies is a field in and of itself. It has journals, it has scholars and experts, it, um, there's research done in interdisciplinary studies. And basically what the field focuses on, again, going back to Aristotle's perspective that you need multiple views on any one issue to really understand it. Interdisciplinary studies focuses on critical thinking. And when I say critical, I don't mean criticizing. I mean critical as an important, as important. If you are engaging in critical thinking, you are, you are figuring out what is the important information I need to know here to deal with this, and how do I get it? And then once you get it, how do I evaluate it? So interdisciplinary studies stresses critical thinking, and you're going to be asked to, to think a lot in these um, next couple of years. It focuses on problem solving because your knowledge doesn't do any good unless it makes something better or different, right? I mean, 
what difference does it make if it's not going to make the world a better place or your field a better place? And so it focuses on problem solving. How do you use the knowledge that you have to actually make something different, to make something better? Also, collaboration. Because, again, you're going to have three or three disciplines that you're going to choose this semester. You're going to have infor uh, information, knowledge, and skills from three different disciplines. But also, collaboration and teamwork is critically important. Almost everything done now is done through a model of collaboration and teamwork. The day when you would become a professional and get a job and go do it by yourself are pretty much over. Now, collaboration with people in your own business or within your own field and across fields is absolutely important because, again, we're understanding the complexity of things and that almost any issue we're studying or we're dealing with is going to need more than one perspective on it. Um, for instance, let's talk about the oil spill. Can you think of one discipline or one area of study that's going to tell you everything you need to know? Well, let's just talk about what areas of study would you need to engage in to really fully understand the oil spill, how it happened, and the consequences, and how to make it better. What are some of the, the fields you might need to know? Information. Biology. 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 Geology. What? Marine science. Marine science. Ecology. Ecology. Safety. Safety. How, yeah, how do we prevent it? Economics. Why? Because of the cost of the oil spill. Yes, the huge cost. And these are just a few. We could probably sit here and come up with many, many more, but your, your examples are excellent. And that is to fully understand the spill, how it happened, what, what were the consequences, and how do we prevent it. There's no one discipline. It's best looked at in an interdisciplinary perspective. And that's what you're going to do in this degree and, and in your professional life. We can also look at the Holocaust. And in looking at how that happened, what might be some fields that have been applied to understanding the Holocaust? Psychology. 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 Why? Because of the thinking of the people at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And then sociology because of the cultural issues that the the different races. And right. Psychology and sociology to understand how did the Germans come to follow the Nazis? What is it the Nazis did to get their allegiance? You mentioned what Sociology. Field? Sociology, of the study of the culture. Um, looking at, at history, certainly. Um, uh, writing and journalism to understand that many of the people in the concentration camps kept journals, wrote poetry, wrote books afterwards, understanding their perspective on what happened. Um, science. Yeah, business, again, there were tremendous uh, business Im uh, implications from the Holocaust. And, and so all of these disciplines would combine to help us understand what really happened there. But no one discipline alone can do that. And the same concept applies to just about any issue you're going to be facing as professionals. And that is, it's going to require re um, multiple perspectives. And sometimes those perspectives might be competing, right? Sometimes they might disagree. Right now, sometimes it, it's hard to see people um, disagreeing without it turning into a um, pretty nasty fight. But the bottom line is, um, sometimes different perspectives and even um, competing perspectives give us more insight. And we have to learn to work with knowledge that may seem to be conflicting or with people who have very different ideas. And that's what interdisciplinary studies does, help you understand how to collaborate, how to work on a team, how to put multiple minds together on a particular issue. And finally, communication. Because knowledge is no good unless you can communicate it. And one of the things that you're going to be asked to do over and over again, both in this class and in future classes, is communicate, both through writing and orally. Because that is the hallmark of a, a strong professional is your ability to your knowledge your skills but your ability to communicate that it doesn't have any it doesn't do any good to have all the knowledge in the world if you can't communicate that both um, verbally and um, in writing and so one of the things that that in working through your courses for this degree is really going to be emphasized 
is the communication piece. And so for all of these reasons, I think um, work together to make your degree a very strong one. Um, a couple of things you're going to be asked to do. You, this is the only degree on campus that gives you so much control over your degree. It is very individualized. Even those of you who might choose the same three disciplines um, for your degree might have very different courses under those disciplines. So everybody's degree is going to be different, and that's the beauty of it. And the challenge of that, though, is that it puts more responsibility on you as a student. Number one, you have to think more. You don't just go sign up for a major and then take the courses in that major. You have to think about what is it I want to do and what three disciplines are going to help me get there. And, and then working with an advisor, finding the courses that can, are going to work for you. Because every degree is different, everybody's program of study is different, it has to go through a committee to make sure that um, your program of study is meeting all the requirements for a degree here at South Alabama. And to do that, you're going to need two documents. And one is your rationale, and the second is your grad plan. And Karen Goodwin, one of the advisors, many of y'all have probably already met with her, um, <clears throat> was going to be here tonight, but she's out ill. But she'll be here at a later date, is that right, to talk? So I'm going to um, talk about these two documents as they work together, but Karen's going to give you specific information about the grad plan. Your rationale is um, just a two-page paper. A rationale means your reasons for doing something. It's just a two-page paper where you talk about why did you choose interdisciplinary studies, why did you choose the three disciplines, what do you want to do when you finish, and how are these three disciplines going to help you. Uh, achieve your goal. And there's a very specific outline to write this uh, rationale. And Dr. Um, Javier Farrell will distribute that to you. That will be due later in the semester. It's just maybe two or three pages, but it requires a lot of thinking. And, and you need to adhere to the format um, on that rationale. And to think very carefully about it. So you write your rationale. And then also this semester, you will be developing a graduation plan. And that is, you will sit down with your advisor very carefully and choose your disciplines and the courses that you're going to take under those disciplines. And, and write it all out. There's a structured format for that too, where you're going to identify your disciplines and what courses you're going to take. And then the, the rationale and the grad plan go together and go through the committee, uh, the departmental committee. They're signed by uh, faculty, um, advisors, uh, myself as chair, and, the, and reviewed by the dean. And what your, your rationale has to do, basically, is say, this is why I chose interdisciplinary studies, and this is how these disciplines are going to help me uh, achieve my professional goals. And then your grad plan, it, your graduation plan, is the outline of what courses you're going to take under those disciplines. You sign it, once those are approved, you sign it, I sign it, the dean signs it, and that is essentially your contract with the university. Nobody else in other departments have to do this because those departments are structured. Because your program is so individualized, um, it, the, your, your uh, grad plan is essentially your agreement your, with the university to say, this is what I'm going to do as um, uh, for my degree. And again, it's carefully reviewed to make sure it meets all the requirements. <coughs> the grad plan isn't hard, but it's <coughs> detail-oriented and it's nitpicky, and it takes a little time, and, and Karen will talk to you more about that. But those are the two documents that you're going to need by the end of the class to have gotten through and gotten approved. Once you sign that, that grad plan, then your advisor will enter that formally into the university system. And what will happen then, that is your agreement. And um, for everybody, when, when you get ready to graduate here at South, the registrar's office is going to look at all of the courses to make sure that you have taken every course you need to graduate. <clears throat> for interdisciplinary studies majors, what they're going to do is look at the courses that, that you said you were going to take, that the courses that are on your graduation plan, 
and make absolutely sure every course that you said you're going to take, she signed off on it, I signed off on it, the dean signed off on it, it's there. And it's in the system. And the semester before you graduate, the registrar is going to look and see, hmm, has this student met all of the requirements to graduate? And that means that the registrar, the folks in that office, are going to see what courses you said you'd take. And if you didn't take the courses you said you'd take, it, you, it could prevent you from graduating. But that doesn't mean that you can't change courses. It just means that once you sign that graduation plan, that is your agreement with the university. And if you change it, it has to be with your advisor and with your advisor's approval. And she will go in and change it in the system so that you don't get to the semester you want to graduate and the registrar says, wait a minute, you can't substitute these courses. Things come up, right? Um, you're going to fill out your grad plan and it's a formal document. It's an agreement, again, signed. Um, but we know things come up. You might have a class on there and that department doesn't offer that class this year. Or you might decide you'd rather take another class. Some people even change disciplines sometimes as you get more in, in, involved in it. And that is absolutely fine. The key is once you sign that grad plan, if you make any changes to that, it has to be with advisor approval and your advisor will have to go back in and change that within the um, uh, system so that the registrar knows you, but this is okay and, and to be looking for that class instead of another class. Uh -huh. So you don't have to resubmit a whole new grad plan? No, okay. no, or rationale. Absolutely not. Um, she'll change it on there, write right. it on your paper, and change it in the system, and you're good to go. Sure. And you can even change a discipline, and you don't right. have to do it. I can go to work now. <laughs> it most I hope so. I mean, our goal is to get you a degree that's going to get you a job when you finish. Yes. You shouldn't have to go to graduate school, but if you want to, um, interdisciplinary studies has the potential to put you in a in a pretty competitive. Uh, place to do that. We had two degree programs here, the adult degree program and the interdisciplinary degree program for students of traditional age. And when the program started out, when the degree started out, <coughs> it was thought that adults have been in the workforce for many years, you have a work history, um, and what you really need is to get back into the academic side of it. And so the uh, people in the adult degree program were asked to do a senior research thesis, and that is writing a paper on a topic that you found of interest or relevance in your field. The students who were under 25, the traditional age students, it was thought that, well, folks need to build their work history. And so those students um, were required to do an internship uh, to, to get a little pre-professional work experience. But what we found in the past few years is that there were a lot of adults who may have years of work history, but you're here getting your degree because you want to do something different. Do we have folks in here like that? Mm -hmm. Right. You've been working for years, but you want a degree so you can do something different than yes. what you've been doing. Yes. And so an internship might be perfect for you because you can get some pre-professional experience in your, in your chosen field. Um, and then we had some uh, traditionally age students that would love to write a senior research thesis or a paper on a topic. And, and so those restrictions weren't quite working. So as of fall, we wanted to make up the program as responsive to everybody's needs and interests as, as possible. So as of this fall, if you came in the program this fall, you have a choice about no matter whether you're in the adult degree program or in the interdisciplinary degree program, you can choose whether you do an internship or a senior research thesis. So, um, you, you're going to need to think through what you want to do. Most everybody in the room is you're going to have to think through, all right, do I want to do the senior research thesis or do I want to do the internship? And I want to talk a little bit about what each um, entails. Both are considered your capstone projects, and that is, these are the projects that end your degree, that are the capstone, the, the uh, capping off of your degree. And, and they're your opportunity to synthesize and use <coughs> all of the knowledge and skills that you've got through your degree in one way or another. They're both two semesters, and, and you're going to be talking about this when you talk to Ms. Goodwin. Um, they both involve work over two semesters. 
let's talk a little bit about the internship. Um, and you have a handout on internships that answers, answers a lot of your questions. Your internship, your capstone project should be done your last two semesters in school because that has given you the opportunity to take all of your classes, get all of your knowledge and skills. It's, the, it's done at the end of your, your study, so your last two semesters. In 496, you will actually serve your internship. The semester before you take your internship, though, is when you have to find it. Um, working with our internship coordinator, Dr. Joycelyn finley Herbert. And so you have to figure out with your advisor, what semester do I want to do my internship? And, and then be thinking about where do you want to do it? Because you have to have all of your, paper, your um, internship identified and all your paperwork completed the semester before so that you come start right in on the first day of classes um, doing your internship. So the semester before your last semester, you'll serve your internship. And the third semester before you finish, you'll have to identify it. Again, you can work with Dr. Finley Hervey. You can work with Career Services. Um, we'll work with you through the process of identifying your internship. And you'll register for 496 once your paperwork is signed and serve your internship and, and, um, in a location that you've identified that's going to help you get some job skills um, relevant to your chosen profession. It's also online. Uh -huh. Do you get paid doing that? They can be paid. Most of them aren't, to be perfectly honest. Oh, the place has to agree. There's a process. Okay. Um, and um, Dr. Finley Hervey can tell you about it, but there's, you have to identify potential locations and you treat it just like a job search um, because finding an internship can be a, a tough process um, because he asked if they can be paid. Some are paid. Most aren't because internship sites put a big investment in you. They have to supervise you. Um, they have to take liability for what you do. And so internship sites really, um, it, it takes a lot for an, uh, a site to have an intern. And so you'll start looking for internship sites, talking to potential people there, um, and then narrowing it down. And then your internship site has to agree. And there's an application, and Dr. Finley <coughs> Hervey um, reviews that and approves that. And if the internship is relevant to your professional goal and the internship site agrees and the, the uh, duties are appropriate, then that gets signed off and that's your internship. But it can take a while. Uh -huh. How many hours? <clears throat> 120 hours on site. But it's also a class and it's online. So you'll be doing readings and keeping a journal and, and so there'll be class assignments. But it's 120 hours Physically at the physically website. at the location. His question was, if your current job um, is what you want to do when you finish, can you count that as your internship? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> um, <coughs> if you want to stay there, you you love your company, you want to stay there, um, then you can do your internship there. But it would require you to do 120 hours in addition to what you're doing and new skills. So for instance, we have a number of people who want to stay where they are at Austell or wherever they are. Um, but they want to be a supervisor or they want to move into a different role. And so they could do their internship there, but it would be 120 hours of different work than what they're doing in their current job. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, a, lot, and a, a number of people do that. But what Dr. Finley Herbie is going to be looking for is um, you can't get academic credit for just doing your job. It has to be learning new yeah, skills. With your degree that actually is at work for. Yeah. Talk to your, if you're thinking, talk to your, every time you go in to talk to your advisor, mention the internship or the senior research thesis so you don't forget it. Because a lot of students, we talk about it now, and it might be a year before you're ready to do it. And by that time, um, I'll be a vague memory, or what I said here might be a vague memory, and um, you'll need to go back and look at your handouts. 
but so talk to your advisors every time you go in about uh, what you need to do for your internship or your senior research thesis. <clears throat> they can refresh your memory. Dr. Finley Hervey's <coughs> door is always open for you to come in and talk to her. The internship can be a wonderful opportunity to get some um, pre-professional experience in your field. Let me talk to you a little bit now about the senior research thesis, which might be a wonderful option for a number of y'all as well. The senior research thesis, again, is two semesters. And in the first semester, you sign up for a class where you write your proposal. And that's basically, you spend this class thinking about what is it that interests me? What is it that's going to help me? If I really knew more about this, this would really help me in my chosen profession. <clears throat> and you spend the entire semester in that class thinking, exploring topics, learning about writing your, your proposal. And then you put together your proposal. This is what I want to write about. This is what I'm curious about, I'm interested in. This is what I really need to help me um, be good in my profession. And you, you put it together in a, in a proposal format. You give people a little background um, uh, about why is this important, this is how I'm going to do it, um, and you get it signed off on. And um, the really neat thing about the senior research thesis is you get to work with an advisor from somewhere around campus that has an interest and expertise in your particular area. So you, um, in 380, you write your proposal, you come up with your idea. Gee, this is what I think I'd like to know more about. And, and then you take another class, 430, in which you actually do that. And you do it working with an advisor from somewhere around campus. And when I say advisor, I don't mean to confuse you. A, a, a faculty member from somewhere on campus that shares your interest. And that is the person that you'll work most closely with in then doing the paper. And so, for instance, if you have an interest in political science, an issue related to political science, or leisure studies, or business, you would find, we would help you to find a faculty member in that area that's going to help you think about your project, um, think about how do you find information about your project, and put that project together. Um, and, and so it's your opportunity to really spend some time thinking about a topic that you find of interest. The nice thing, too, about the senior research thesis is that it is very flexible. Um, both of the courses are offered online. You don't have the 120 hours on site that are required for your internship. So if y'all are already working um, and you, your schedule is, is pretty inflexible, uh, then you might think about a senior research thesis because it, the hours are much more flexible in terms of writing your paper. Basically, you meet with your advisor, y'all determine when you meet, how often you meet. You know, it's based on what you need. Um, it, it's not structured like a, a, a formal course. There's a lot more responsibility placed on you because, you, you know, you've got to work independently um, with your senior research advisor, again, your faculty member. But it really provides you an opportunity to work with a faculty member that has knowledge and expertise in your area. Um, and it provides you a lot of flexibility because you're not locked into that, that um, time constraint that the internship would give you. So the bottom line is whatever you're curious about or interested in, you can develop a, um, a research project around it. And it could be going to the library and finding out just what's already been written and summarizing it. It could be interviewing people. It could be developing a survey and asking people to complete it and, and then writing up what you found. So the, the beauty of the Senior Research Project is it's all about you and a topic that you find really interesting or helpful. It's very flexible. You work one-on-one -on -one with a faculty advisor who sort of guides you through this process and helps you um, develop your expertise in this area. The time frame for both your senior research thesis and your internship, no matter which one you do, needs to be your last two semesters here at the university. And so you just need to plan for that. Um, you, you have to finish it, either your internship or your senior research thesis in order to graduate.
not going to graduate without having finished one or the other. And when you identify which one you want to do on your grad plan, you can change it. I, again, if, as long as you go back, talk to your advisor, say, hey, I thought I wanted to do an internship, but I really like the idea now of doing this senior research thesis. Um, and no problem, you can change it. But you've got to do it before your last two semesters. Um, you're going to be writing in both. You're going to be doing research. It's just whether you want the um, on-site experience or um, the flexibility and the opportunity to really delve more um, in, into a particular topic and, and work with a, a faculty member on campus. We have this program has been around 20 years. We have lots of faculty members who love to be seen, uh, work with students on senior research theses and students really love it because you get a chance to work with somebody who really knows what you're talking about. If you're interested in sports or you're interested in business or human services, then, then we would help you connect with an advisor that's really going to work with you one-on-one -on -one, um, in, in terms of helping you learn about that particular topic. And students find it really, really satisfying. They really like it having come out the other side. Um, there, are, there are good reasons to, to do both your internship or your senior research thesis, and um, there are good reasons why they're both available online now. And that is, as you get toward the end, you may know, for instance, you want to go back where you grew up or you want to go to a different place in the country, you might do your internship in a place where you want to live. And, and many students get hired um, at where they do their internship. And so you can do your internship anywhere. You can even do it out of the country. And thank you for reminding me that. Please think about international internships. So the bottom line is be thinking now. Um, you'll be working on your rationale and your grad plan. <coughs> Again, the devil is in the details. Right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank y'all very much. It's so pleased.